Jupiter is the fifth planet in our solar system. It's a gaseous planet, meaning the planet's mostly just gas. It's said that if Jupiter didn't exist, many asteroids would have destroyed Earth a long time ago. Its massive size and insane density causes it to have gravity so strong that it dragged those asteroids out of their path and away from our fragile planet. It's possible to see Jupiter with the naked eye every day from January till September on the eastern or southern side of the sky, between 5 and 7 a.m. But is it enough to just see Jupiter, or would you rather fly through it? Would that even be possible? In this video, we're going to take a look at just how possible it would be. People are always fascinated by Pluto, Saturn, or Mars, but not many seem that interested in Jupiter. This to us seems strange as Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, 318 times the mass of Earth to be precise. It's one of the most important places in the solar system. The planet itself is impressive with ancient cyclonic storms larger than the Earth, or a magnetosphere so powerful it defies comprehension. One of the most compelling reasons to visit Jupiter is because of its moons. Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede might all contain vast oceans of liquid water underneath icy shells. And as you probably know, wherever we find liquid water on Earth, we find life. And so, the icy moons of Jupiter are probably the best place to look for life in the entire solar system. Unfortunately, there are a lot of problems to overcome before this could even be contemplated, if at all possible. Firstly, Jupiter is really far away. It takes a long time to get there. The first spacecraft to ever cross the gulf from the Earth to Jupiter was NASA's Pioneer 10. It launched on March 3, 1972 and reached on December 3, 1973. That's a total of 640 days of flight time. But Pioneer 10 was just flying by on its way to explore the outer solar system. It came within 130,000 kilometers of the planet, took the first close-up pictures ever taken of Jupiter, and then continued into deep space for another 11 years before NASA lost contact. Pioneer 11 took off a year later, and arrived a year later. It made the journey in 606 days, making a much closer flyby, getting within 21,000 kilometers of Jupiter, and visiting Saturn too. The last spacecraft currently studying the gas giant planet from orbit is NASA's Juno, which launched on August 5, 2011, and arrived in orbit around Jupiter on July 4, 2016. This $1.1 billion mission has now been extended through September 2025. Before the Juno mission, little was known about the wind and cloud systems of the polar regions. The solar-powered robotic probe, whose adventure exploring the atmosphere and interior of the planet Jupiter was scheduled to end this July, has been granted a four-year extension. Its mission has also expanded, and it will now investigate the planet's system of rings and three of its large and remarkable moons. Since its arrival at Jupiter in 2016, Juno's observations have focused on dynamics that scientists previously knew very little about. The gas giant's complex atmosphere and storm systems at the high latitudes of the northern polar region. Juno has captured breathtaking images of Jupiter's cloud systems and other atmospheric phenomena at very close range. It's also probed beneath the visible cloud layers. Using instruments that measure Jupiter's powerful magnetic field and gravitational variations, Juno has divined processes and structures deep within the gaseous world. Among its many discoveries are stupendous strokes of lightning exploding dozens of miles beneath the planet's thick layer of clouds, an abundance of water welling up at the equator, mighty aurora surging high in the atmosphere, packs of Earth-sized storms spinning around both poles, and wind systems whose roots are buried 1,000 to 2,000 miles below Jupiter's cloud tops. To get close enough to Jupiter to do what it came for, Juno must pass through bands of intense radiation, captured in Jupiter's surrounding magnetic field. To minimize exposure to radiation damage, NASA placed Juno in a highly elliptical orbit that keeps it well outside the radiation belts most of the time. At the far-flung end of its elongated orbit, Juno is 5 million miles away from Jupiter, 20 times farther than our moon is from Earth. Once every 53 days, Juno's orbit carries it swiftly through the danger zone and close to Jupiter, passing only 2,600 miles above the cloud tops in the northern regions, offering a view like no other in the solar system. Jupiter, like the other gas giants, doesn't have a rocky surface. 
But that does not mean it's just a massive cloud floating through the vacuum of space. It's made up of mostly helium and hydrogen, and as you move from the outer layers of the atmosphere towards the deeper parts, the gas grows denser and the pressures become more extreme with wind speed increasing and temperatures quickly rising. In 1995, NASA's Galileo mission sent a probe into Jupiter's atmosphere. It broke up at about 75 miles depth. Pressures here are over 100 times more intense than anything on Earth. At the innermost layers of Jupiter, that are 13,000 miles deep, the pressure is 2 million times stronger than what is experienced at sea level on Earth, and temperatures are hotter than the Sun's surface. Let's not forget that helium and hydrogen are not the only gases to be found on Jupiter. Methane and ammonia are two other types of gases you would find there, which are not the most compatible gases for humans. Unlike Earth, Jupiter has no oxygen, so breathing would be a major issue for anyone attempting to visit Jupiter. So clearly, no human's going to be able to venture too far down into Jupiter's depths. But would it be safe to simply orbit the planet? Perhaps we could establish an orbital space station. Well, there is another big problem when it comes to Jupiter, and that is radiation. The biggest planet in the solar system also boasts its most powerful magnetosphere. These magnetic fields charge up particles in the vicinity, accelerating them to extreme speeds that can fry a spacecraft's electronics in moments. Spaceflight engineers have to figure out an orbit and spacecraft design that will reduce the exposure to this radiation. NASA's figured this out with the triple arrayed, perpetually spinning Juno spacecraft, but it doesn't look like it will be a feasible design for human spacecraft. Instead, for a crewed spacecraft to safely orbit or fly past Jupiter, it would have to keep a pretty significant distance away from the planet. Let's be honest, Jupiter is not a nice place to visit. It's a giant ball of gas, and there's nowhere to land. Any spacecraft or person passing through the colorful clouds gets crushed and melted. On Jupiter, the pressure is so strong it squishes gas into liquid. Its atmosphere can crush a metal spaceship like a paper cup. Jupiter's stripes and swirls are cold, windy clouds of ammonia and water. Its great red spot is a giant storm bigger than Earth, which has lasted hundreds of years. Since Jupiter's atmosphere is made up of mostly hydrogen and helium, it's poisonous. There's also dangerous radiation, more than 1,000 times the lethal level for a human. And scientists think that Jupiter's core may be a thick, super-hot soup, up to 50,000 degrees. So the question should not be could we fly through Jupiter, but why would we want to? We think it's far safer to let Juno do the work of sending the information and fantastic images back to us. By the end of its extended mission in 2025, Juno will have orbited Jupiter 76 times over 8 years and collected enough data to keep scientists busy for many more years to come. Then Juno will be deliberately driven into Juno's atmosphere where it will be incinerated in a fiery finale, its atoms forever becoming part of the world it has explored. What planet would you most like to visit? Is there one you'd like to hear more about? Let us know in the comments below and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.